The tension in the district explodes overnight. Protesters, many of them, chanting as you can hear, holding up signs. This is just outside the White House. Hundreds filled the street demanding justice for George Floyd and black lives. She said that's not what this is about. It's about finding a solution going forward. And that is sort of what the message of the protesters is. Yes, individual agitators place to place. But oh, you hear that? There was something just went off. Some sort of explosion over here. Now people are running. This is on H Street. The demonstrations took a turn as some raided businesses, damaged buildings, and squared off with police. This morning, the latest on the aftermath as many seek answers. Good morning. Welcome into Wake Up Washington. We are covering some breaking news this morning. Of course, I'm Mikia Turner and I'm Larry Miller, and we are staying socially distant in the studio as we bring you this story. But the big story this morning is the long night of protests in D.C. and nationwide over the death of George Floyd. Protesters stormed the White House chanting, don't shoot. They also filed the streets in other sections of Northwest before things took a violent and destructive turn. In the last few hours, things have certainly calmed down in D.C. That's right. That's where you'll find on Megan Rivers, who's along 10th Street Northwest, where stores have been damaged out there. Megan, tell us what it's looking like behind you. Good morning, Larry and Makia. I am in city center right behind me. You can see the Gucci store has been uh, broken into of sorts. The double glass here has been broken. You can see uh, some debris from a garbage can nearby is also on the ground. So shattered glass inside right now. You can see staff members uh, doing some inventory about what's going on. If anything is missing or not, we don't have any. We don't know if anything is missing from the store, but we do know that the glass is broken. Now earlier this morning, uh, about one, two o'clock this morning, we were also out here and it was a much different scene and we had a chance to speak to a few people who say the protest was once peaceful. A burning bush on New York Avenue and 10th Street. I didn't start the fire. Was the scene around one o'clock this morning. Lingering protesters lined the streets. At first it started out peacefully. After hours of protests, what was once said to be peaceful Escalated. Someone set this bit of bush on fire and they threw a couple pepper bombs. Things are getting real crazy, but they have spread out the really big group and it seems like things are dying down. Neighbors in disbelief. It's really depressing because I'm seeing a lot of people that's really not from our community coming out here spraying all this Black Lives Matter shit, and it's going to look like we doing it and we ain't the ones doing it. Shattered glass lines the sidewalks, statues spray painted, knocked over, high end boutiques broken into. They tried to get into Gucci, but it seems like the police are really met, um, really dead set on protecting Gucci. By 5 a.m., most protesters left the area. Well, again, you can see here the debris left over uh, from this, uh, the scene from last night, rather. Uh, so cleanup is underway right now. Uh, again, a much calmer scene than we saw when we arrived here early this morning. Things have calmed down tremendously. We still have a few police officers here on scene who are monitoring the area. Uh, but again, we don't know if anything was taken from this store. We do see uh, staff members inside who are assessing that inventory there. Uh, but we'll show you more in this area coming up in the next half hour. But that's the latest here from City Center. I'm Megan Rivers. I'll send things back to you guys in the studio. Unfortunately, a lot of similar images throughout the city. Thank you, Megan. Well, a few businesses in Georgetown were also damaged in the demonstrations overnight. This is video right here of a sneaker store at the corner of M and Wisconsin Avenue. The windows were busted out and glass was scattered all over the sidewalk and road. Police have not have actually been in front of the area where that store is blocked off. Several businesses along a Street corridor were also hit. Many had their doors smashed in and their merchandise stolen. At one point, it seemed as if officers were getting overwhelmed because of the widespread damage there. And here's some video of the T-Mobile store on 15th Street in Northwest. It too was raided overnight during the demonstrations. The glass doors were busted and the store was ransacked. We saw several people go inside and steal phones and other electronics. And we're wondering whether the protests will die out as the weekend ends or keep at this intensity. Evan Kozlov joining us right now from the White House, breaking down the protests that took place there overnight. Evan? Well, yeah, guys, it was a very difficult night for a lot of people in D.C. And, you know, as Megan was talking about, there were a lot of peaceful protesters that were out here, but also a lot of tense moments. And perhaps the area with some of the most tense moments was here at Lafayette Square right outside of the White House. Why don't we show you some of the sights and sounds from last night. Fire 
fireworks in front of the White House. We got that! No peace! Protesters face to face with police. Black lives matter! Frustration over a killing over a thousand miles away, but hitting home. I got a fire. I got a fire in the building. Throughout the night, fires were set by protesters. Eventually, police pushed forward. Tear gas, tear gas. Even throwing tear gas. <laughs> Many protesters caught in the fumes. <laughs> Anger and frustration, sadness too, as protesters demand attention in our nation's capital. All right, so during that segment, we crossed the street here because. As you can see, there's been a lot of damage. Got the shattered windows here. We could hear the, uh, the alarm going off inside. There's a lot of water damage if you peek in there. A lot of damage to establishments like this, like Megan was talking about as well. But if you talk to a lot of these protesters, they don't want these to be the images that you take away from all this. They want you to remember the whole purpose of this, which is Looks like we're having some technical issues with Evan's live shot there, but certainly giving us an indication of what the scene was last night in front of the White House. Now I want to get you a look at some other video. Protesters also raided daily 14 liquors on 14th Street Northwest DC. The glass doors were smashed in, broken bottles of wine were scattered everywhere. Officers tell us that no one at the scene was injured. Well, things certainly got chaotic last night, as our reporters have been tell you, telling you. Even our reporter, Matt Gregory, was injured as tear gas went into his eyes. Buddy, we're tear gas, dude. We can't, we can't do, we're incapacitated, brother. <coughs> I can't see anything. I can't feel. My eyes are burning. I can't breathe. Well, Matt went on Twitter just a short time ago, thinking... Uh, everyone for help. He actually got help, as you saw there, from the protesters that were able to get uh, some solution and get that gas out of his eyes, and he is doing better this morning. And the protests in our area were not only in the district. Virginia State Police tell us that their troopers have spent the night along Sudley Manor Road in Manassas. Police say that's where a large group of protesters became violent, throwing rocks at cars passing and then at officers when they arrived. Officers then used pepper spray to disperse the crowd. State police say that two officers suffered minor injuries. Well, the protest in D.C. was just one of dozens of major demonstrations in big cities with more than 1,000 arrests reported across the nation. And so far, there's no sign of when that might let up. Michael George reports from Minneapolis. From Los Angeles to D.C. to New York City. Fiery protests raged across the country over the death of George Floyd. We appreciate and respect all peaceful protest, but now it is time for people to go home. <laughs> Angry scenes like these played out in American cities for another night, with demonstrators setting fire to police vehicles and marching through the streets. I'm willing to walk, scream, do whatever I need to do to let people know that I'm, I'm really... I'm tired of this. Baltimore, Reno, and Pittsburgh. And some people took advantage, breaking into stores and looting businesses. Get out of the way! Minneapolis, where it all began, was among more than a dozen cities imposing curfews to try to get the situation under control. 45 minutes into the curfew, police are launching tear gas into the crowd of hundreds of protesters. They're trying to disperse this crowd, which has no intention of leaving the scene. Where do I go? I'm with WCCO. Several journalists reporting on the protests, including reporters with CBS, were hit by rubber bullets and even taken into custody. University of Southern California law professor Jody Armour says what we're seeing is bigger than what happened to George Floyd. There was a convergence of a lot of different cases at this moment that I think has raised a lot of a public awareness and made the public especially sensitive at this, at, this point, at this point in time. Floyd's family is calling for the other three officers at the scene of the incident to also be charged. Michael George, CBS News, Minneapolis. Well, the National Guard has now been deployed in several cities to help control demonstrators. We've got this covered for you throughout the day, both right here and online. All you have to do is check out